but so nice to be here and thank you for hosting this opening event for Oz Cyber Australian Cyber Week. We as an Australian government are very proud to support this event and I want to commend the fourth sector competitiveness plan report that will shape all of the discussion that happens throughout this week. I think some really, really important work has been done there. And I think I'll just start by stating the obvious and that is that Cyber Week could not have come at a more opportune moment for our country. We have just had the two biggest cyber attacks that we've ever experienced as a nation within the space of three and a half weeks. No two cyber events are the same, but I think these two particularly highlighted the enormous costs that come from us not paying enough attention to this problem as a country. We had with Optus something which exposed literally millions of Australians to identity theft without question, a significant national security risk for our country. And then, of course, with Medibank, really, you know, the worst possible information that you can take about people probably is their personal health information. And to have that stolen, I think, you know, more than anything has just shown us what, what a costly thing this is to our country and to our citizens to have not had due attention on this problem. So even before all these incidents occurred, I think the Australian government recognised that we do need to bring greater focus and attention. And that's why one of the first things that the government did when it was elected in May was for the first time appoint a standalone cabinet minister with responsibility for cyber security. And they gave me that role. And there is a big job ahead of us all as the people in this room who are going to drive a lot of change here. I think the two incidents that, that have occurred here will without question drive a permanent change to how our country thinks about cybersecurity. And I think for the first time, we're not going to have that consistent problem that we've had, I think, around boardroom tables, but around kitchen tables too, that you know, this is an issue that's important and that we've all got responsibilities. We've all got responsibilities to change too and do things differently. And that's going to mean change at the, you know, big Australian companies around that boardroom level and also, you know, as individuals thinking about how we look after our own data. So one of the things that I think everyone should be able to see here is that an enormous amount has actually already shifted in this last three months. In fact, I'm really confident that we have seen greater change in cybersecurity within the federal government over the last three months than we did in the preceding three years. So I want to just speak about a few of the things that have changed. One of them is that we have literally out of Optus and Medibank built a new model of policing. And this is in par a partnership between the Australian Signals Directorate and the Australian Federal Police. So of course, these two organisations have worked together before but in Optus and then three weeks later in Medibank, they really have started a new model of working together. They are using something called the best athlete principle, which means that these two organisations each have their own powers, their own skills, their own partnerships around police force and intelligence agencies around the world. And they can seamlessly use whoever is best positioned to undertake certain parts of their investigation and activities between the two organisations. So what the Australian government is doing is building out that model of policing. We are making it permanent. We are, we are putting at least 100 people who will sit within this team, partly co-located at the Australian Signals Directorate. Something else that's different about the work that will be done here is that it won't be reactive to crimes that are committed against Australian citizens. This team will actually hunt around the world for the groups that are likely to do Australians damage and make sure that they debilitate their efforts before they can even come onto our shores here in Australia. It's going to be a really important part. There's no silver bullet in cybersecurity. All of you guys know that, but this is going to be a really important part of our efforts here. And it will do two things. The first is, of course, it will weaken these groups. And that's something that, as you all know, we're working really closely with international partners on. But the second thing it will do is is show that there is a cost to coming after us here in Australia. So this is part of our country punching back. If you come and try to hurt our citizens, then we are going to come after you. And I think this puts real, you know, people really on notice about what the costs will be for those groups when they target Australians. So the first thing is this new model of policing. But I did want to mention something that didn't get a great deal of coverage when it happened about two weeks ago. And that is that Australia has just be, become designated the leader of a global ransomware task force. So this is a group of 37 countries around the world who are all concerned about and experiencing ransomware attacks. And Australia is actually going to coordinate and lead that group. We're having our first meeting early next year. 
and that will help us really collaborate between groups of countries that are concerned about these things. The reason that we're doing that is because all of you know this, but for people watching at home, you know, the same ransomware groups are, uh, the same cyber criminals are attacking countries around the world. So it's not just Australia that's been the subject of some of these groups. So we do need to have that international focus and approach, and it's really important for us to push and drive that globally. You'll notice that we've introduced new laws into Parliament that will make changes to the penalties that are faced by companies that haven't properly protected the cybersecurity of Australians. And we have essentially also built a cyber response function in the Australian government that, much to my frustration, didn't actually exist before. And we've done all that while we've, I think, managed well the response to Optus and the response to Medibank. But I know, and you guys know, that there is a lot more that we need to do here. And in fact, I think there's some really big, important, thorny policy questions that probably we could have been working on in previous years that we are now going to have a big opportunity to address. So one of the very topical questions that's, that's on everyone's mind at the moment is about the data that Australian companies hold about that. that and really seeing that, I think, for the first time as a real potential vulnerability for our country. Data is, of course, incredibly important and valuable in this digital age, and our startup sector, more than anyone, needs to have clear rules governing how it can be used. But I think for the first time, we've really understood as a broad country and community that this also creates a problem for us when companies are harbouring huge amounts of data. And we do need to have a discussion about what that right trade-off is between the economic development needs and the privacy, very legitimate privacy concerns that Australians have. So we're exploring that question through a privacy review that the Attorney General is conducting at the moment. Um, there are real issues with the critical infrastructure work that has been done over a period of time. So you might have seen that I've commented previously that the Security of Critical Infrastructure Act, which is kind of meant to be the be all and end all of cybersecurity management in Australia, actually has not been useful to us at all with the cyber attacks that we've experienced recently. And so there's some real work to be done here to understand why this law, which was, you know, it says on the package that it's meant to provide us with all the solutions when it actually came to, to the crunch time. It didn't provide us with the help that we needed. We need to have a discussion about ransomware payments, about how we're going to regulate this. This is clearly a pervasive question for Australian business, and we've got to work together within the cybersecurity industry, government and business to, to understand how we're going to properly monitor and focus on what, what's going on there. So the approach of the government so far, we've got to act urgently on a bunch of these things. And the, the list that I've mentioned there are things that the, that the Australian government has actually already done in this past eight weeks or so. These bigger questions are going to be addressed in the cyber strategy for Australia, which I announced that we would essentially re, re and we will, we will do that over the course of about the next eight months. I think if you, some of you in this room would have been engaged with the development of the previous cyber strategy for Australia, which was, you know, it's really important that we have a cyber strategy for the country. I think things are moving so quickly in cyber security that when you read that strategy now, it, it lacks a little bit of ambition. And if there's one thing I want for us for cyber security in Australia, it's to be ambitious. I actually genuinely believe that Australia can be the most cyber safe country in the world. But if we're going to get there, some big things are going to have to change. And the cyber strategy is how we're going to set down that agenda and work through it together. So if we do reach that goal of Australia being the most cyber secure country in the world, it is going to be in very large part because of the people in this room. One of the things that can get lost about cyber security is that it's kind of in and part of everything that we do, and that can make it hard to manage. But one of the really important aspects of this policy agenda that we have is industry development. Cyber security is a, is a cool part of our digital economy. It is a critical part of our sovereign capability. And for that reason, we are going to need to do some work together to understand how I can support you and how the Australian government can support you to grow and build your businesses. I think there's actually a lot of opportunity here. You know, a big part of my job is managing risks and trying to stop terrible things from happening. But this is a good question. I want to work with you guys to talk about how we can build great jobs for Australians, how we can get these firms to be world leading so that you can go and export your products around the world. And that's a, a great a, a great challenge for us to work on together. Just if you're interested, and I, I know we'll talk about this in, in, in the months to come, but a, a lot of my background has been in questions about economic development. And I'm very interested in the work of an Italian economist, Mariana Mazzucato. Some of you will 
No, I'm seeing a few nods around the room. But one of the things that Mariana Mazzucato is is very big on is the is the way that we can use regulation to drive best practices in our nascent industries. And this is something that I'm really thinking about in cybersecurity. How can we create world leading laws that will give you bigger opportunities to grow and develop your businesses? And I'm looking forward to talking to you a bit more about that question. So what is really great about this is that we are starting from a really strong position and the sector competitiveness plan makes that really clear. We have already got 47,000 people in Australia today in dedicated cybersecurity roles and an additional almost 100,000 people who are working in cyber related roles. We've got a cyber sector contributing an estimated $2.4 billion to GDP in 2022, which is a pretty significant increase on the previous year. And so these are all you know, very important. And this report that has been done on this is, is cool. But what I want to say is it's the energy and the vibrancy and the excitement that I get from the sector that is making me so excited about this. There is just so much enthusiasm for how good we can be as a country at this. And that just gets me thrilled. So I'm very excited. And so I just wanted to close by saying what a great opportunity Australian Cyber Week is. And I've had a look at the agenda and there is just so much going on here. I know that the Australian Signals Directorate coming on to talk to you later today. These people are absolute guns and I love every minute that I have working with them. The Deputy Prime Minister and I are very lucky to work closely with this organisation and they're just fantastic. Uh, you've got RMIT coming and the Australian Women in Security Network talking to you as well. And so I just want to finish by saying how thrilled I am to be here. We've got a really important mandate for change coming out of what's happened with our country and I'm so excited about the next three years in which we'll be able to work on some of these really critical problems together. So thanks for having me everyone and I'd like to formally launch Cyber Week. Thanks. Thank